Uh, Kevin <laughs> this is not gave me well. the lead today. Uh, Remember, people are listening too. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Oh right. <laughs> They've already changed their podcast style. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking all freaked out, and, and you're like, you're like, well, what? What? Yeah, this isn't the silent thing you put in your no, this in is the your... Marcel Marceau podcast. Thank you. Anyway, so uh, welcome to Funny Blue Pizza. Check out our website, funnybluepizza.com. Um, my co-host is Kevin Colby, also known as Kevin Colby. Thank you. <laughs> My friend and me, Kevin. I'm uh, Christopher Sean Shaw, also known as Christopher, Christopher Sean, Sean Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Say that five times fast. And yes, I am wearing a different shirt for those of you watching, but same pajama pants. It's important to know. I'm, no. I'm sure so, somebody at home has like pulled out a little notebook and go, all right, Mabel, let's make a note of this. He's got the same pants on, but his shirt has changed. I don't it's understand. a joke because it's pajama pants. But Jesus-looking guy looks exactly the same. I don't understand. <laughs> it's called batch producing. <laughs> yeah. And I went, I'm lazy. I went to the bother of actually changing half of my out. Well, actually, not there even half of my out, but I changed my dress shirt. That's it. But anyway. Oh, well, and I'm hatless because... Too. Get this, I put my hat down during our break, and I don't know what I did with it. So I have, so my hat's gone. My hair is getting to that point where it's a little bit too long. I don't know, if I was, if I was, if my head was buzzed, I, it wouldn't be that. Anyway, whatever. Christopher is too those humble of, to those announce. Those of you listening his, don't yeah, care. Yeah, Christopher's too humble to announce that we're starting a GoFundMe for a new, new cap for him. So I just, I, I'll throw that out there now. So much. <laughs> thank you thank you kevin colby um but but uh but uh give send go over gofundme thank you very oh, much oh there we go anyway um so i i've i've been i've been given the reins today because we started mm -hmm. this thing called mm -hmm. mystery topic which we're hoping for a better name like yeah, another really name like you know like mystery minute like that has a nice little flow to it mystery topic the t kind of like puts yeah. the brakes on and I, I don't anyway mystery topic and here's the here's the gist one of us doesn't know what the other's gonna bring up on the podcast get out i i know isn't that it, that's just crazy that, that's, that sounds like crazy talk doesn't it so kevin colby so so the previous episode kevin brought something to the table that i didn't know what he was going to talk about and we riffed on that for about a half hour and now today um uh well same day <laughs> for us <laughs> But it's not when they're listening. Batch producing, ladies and That's gentlemen. Right. Batch produ Anyway, so uh, on this episode, which is this episode six? Um, I think this is maybe. episode six. Yes. Anyway, on episode, this episode six of the one we're recording. <laughs> so yeah. Of the, well, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm going to vote okay. that we put them in order. But That's anyway, right. you know we'll what? Our internal squabbles. Yes. On the podcast, so I have the reins, and the topic that I'm going to bring up is. Since we talked in a previous episode, about three episodes ago, maybe, about music yes. in video content, how important music is and how it's actually more than 50%. It's more than half. For those of you who don't know what 50% <laughs> it's more than half. Our other podcast, of your me. viewing experience, um, unless it's a silent film or something artsy fartsy like that but anyway um so we're going to talk today and share our thoughts from different backgrounds and perspective of of the visual component mm. to media content films videos tv etc kevin as you know comes from a tv radio background i come mm -hmm. from an acting slash filmmaking background so uh, we hope to bring our two different perspectives on the importance of the visual content you're consuming as opposed to the music. I mean, obviously, they complement each other. Yes. Obviously. So, um, Kevin, what are your thoughts? Talk to um, me about I'm, visuals. I, I'm for visuals. Yeah. Absolutely I'm, for. I've, I've never protested visuals. You know, so it's funny <laughs> you ask. When... When I got into radio, because that's how I kind of got into whatever broadcasting media, whatever first, you know, uh, I loved it. You know, I, I loved radio. In fact, it still remains 
my first love. Just love it. But then when I transitioned into television, it was like, oh, wow. You know, the, the difference in like a, like a podcast or radio or a radio show or something like that, you can, you, you can, by your words, like almost like a book, you can paint that picture. You know, I mean, we, we might hear the words describe and we see something different, but we're kind of doing that visually in our mind. Then you get into video, film, what well, I don't care what you want to call it, and something's got to back that visual up. Because, you know, if you just put a if if you do like an amazing short film and there's no video to it, then it it's called audio. <laughs> it's called a podcast. You mean there's you mean there's no sound to it? Yes. Yes. So yeah. 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 So, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, and and visuals, because we're talking visuals today, right? We are talking visuals today, but yeah. uh, but obviously the the sound is a is a strong component because it yes. it's an eclectic yes mixture of all these things yeah namely sound and visuals yeah. but yeah visuals we're talking can the make importance of visuals break. yeah yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. But, I mean sound design is huge music is huge but you know the the wrong visual you know can also um, even the way the visual is presented correct can completely change the mood. Of something absolutely just like the sound can completely change the movie as well yep yeah so so let's talk about that what are some examples uh kevin colby about uh uh how uh, the visuals help you perceive the quality of the pro product or whatever okay. it is so th that's actually that's a fantastic question and the first well thank you the first thing that came to mind was uh, schindler's list and I remember Spielberg making the decision to do that in black and white. So it kind of took you back to how we remember a lot of the films of the Holocaust that they were in black and white. Right. And I thought, wow, that's it seems so simple. But it was smart because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't made I'm not a filmmaker like 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 Christopher, but I, I know enough about it that, that of course things have changed so much digital, but you know, you, you may change the way the colors are, even though you're shooting it in black and white, because certain colors look different in black and white or that, 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 what do you want to call it? monochromatic tone? But then, and I, I don't think this would give anything away. I mean, hopefully people have seen Schindler's list by now, <laughs> but there's that, it's been there, a there's, decade or two or three. Yeah, there's only <laughs> there's only a hint of color in there a couple of times, and one is, I think it's the little girl, and she's wearing a red dress, and and they track her because I if I remember right in the movie she's she doesn't know it but she's going to her death, mm. and just that that I'm getting a chill that 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 moment of color gave that scene just a an even more haunting look. Now, you know, how he may have meant it may have hit differently than it, it, it meant for me, but that one that one is one immediately that came out. But then I think of uh, then okay, something totally on the other extreme. Did you ever see the fifth element with Bruce Willis? Long time ago, yeah. yeah. I saw it on I, video. Just a fun movie. Um it's extremely almost over the top visuals with their colors. Yeah, the color their, palette is very oh, vibrant. Yeah. yeah. And pops. their textures. And so, you know, I mean, Blade Runner, Saving Private Ryan, Dark Knight. I mean, it goes on and on and on where there is a in fact, so I edit on Final Cut Pro. Me too. And I'm I'm sure you can get this on Premiere and all the other ones, but you can buy what's called LUTs. Yeah, and yes, yes, and there's now, actually is, what does LUT stand for? It stands for lookup table. Oh wow, I thought yep. it was something. Yeah, no, okay, I thought it was something more fancy schmancy, but actually, yeah. now that I'm remembering, it was something like, well, what does that mean? What is yeah. yeah. lookup table? What, what does that mean? mean? Like that makes no sense. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but but basically, if you've never used them, it's just a it's they're they're it's a filter. Yeah, it's a filter that will color your footage that's pre-made mostly, yeah. or you can yeah. create your own. And I yeah. have one that has a, a variety of looks and, 
and literally you can color your video to make it look like the matrix or kill bill mm -hmm. or true grit or something like that. And I know it sounds weird if you've never done it, but the, the color of the scene can change the mood of the scene, which to me is all about the visuals. Yeah. It can change the tone, you know, Yeah, absolutely. Warmer colors compared to cooler colors, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It can, it can change. Yeah. So just like, uh, music, yep, and and whatever your choice of music is can dramatically alter the scene. So can different elements like yeah. color and um, what lens did you use and yes. stuff yeah. like that. Now, now I don't want to get into the weeds here, but that's not so much super duper important for you know if you're wanting to start filmmaking or something like that, well, what lens should I get? What, I mean, we, we covered that in the previous episode. If you have a smartphone, you have a camera and you have a nice camera. Absolutely. Like, unless you have a, unless you have like the very first iteration of iPhone still. And if or you do, phone. how are you getting by those iOS yeah. updates? I yeah. mean, how's that working for you? But anyway, <laughs> um, so, so, so yeah. So um, color and, and, and visuals like that, the other thing that stands out is the lighting. I wanted to just backtrack really quick. Um, was there another element in Schindler's List, though, that was, and I'm glad you brought up the the black and white and then the specific things, because even the rest of the frame, the rest of the screen was in black and white, but just the coat on her was red, yeah. but also weren't the flames colored? The flames, well? yeah. <clears throat> the yeah, flames the... and the candles? Um, yeah, yeah. At least in one particular scene, flames on the candles were, were colored. Yeah. And and I I don't I don't remember reading what the point of that was. My interpretation is that you know fire can mean life, and oh. so there all of a sudden there was there was the there was at least some life among yeah. death and the chaos. Um, and here's the thing: here's what you know. Same thing about movies and television. Sometimes I how I will interpret something is interpreted for me, right? You know, and if it helps me enjoy That's it right now. Sometimes I also have to go on there and go, I have no idea what that movie was about. What the heck did that scene mean? Oh, right. oh okay. I've but seen yeah, a few of those. That, yeah, but you're right. That Those were both the only two colors I remember seeing. Yeah, I think those are the only two colorizations. So everything else in the frame was black and white, yep. except for the red coat. And then in the scenes with the candle, there were, there were, uh, they colorized the flame itself, mm -hmm. everything else black and white. So very, I mean, obviously that, that communicates something. You're communicating something with the music you're communicating something with the visuals. So that's very, very important. The other um, aspect, aside from the overall aesthetic of, you know, what, what, for lack of a better phrase, uh, LUT is one way you can do in post-production, but mm -hmm. sometimes you do something in camera that's yeah. baked in. So, you, cause you know the look you're going for when you're shooting. So, but the other thing about, um, about that is it also, I mean, have you ever like watched, just flip through the channels on TV and you instantly know it's a soap opera? Yes. Why is that? It's because of the overall look, yeah. the aesthetic of the lighting, maybe the sets, maybe the makeup on the actors. I mean, like there's, there's, there's little elements that are all together that, sh that, that communicate to you, oh, this is a soap opera. You know, well, it's also to, you go to a movie yeah, yeah. and a movie has a completely different yeah. look. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. Well, and typically, you know, take a soap opera, take television news. Um, there it's typically shot in, in 30 frames a second, maybe 60. And what that does is our, our eyes see more like in, in, well, I've heard both. I've heard our eyes see more in 30 frames or more in 24 frames, but it's more of a realistic, look so that's why a lot of sitcoms are shot with a a a video look if you will then there's other shows like 24 i mean name any of any of them that are shot that have what's called a film look yeah. and that's typically i mean it, you know i can shoot in film look i shoot in 24 frames and therefore it just it has a little bit more of a cinematic yes. look which can look different as opposed yeah. to live streaming, generally people live stream in 30 frames or even 60 frames because it still looks more real. Plus, there's a whole other reason to doing that so it doesn't tax your equipment. So that's another way of film versus video. 
Right. And you then know, there's the lighting aspect. And let me do a little demonstration for those of you watching. I chose not to turn my ring light on because there's so much light coming into the room. But here's the ring light on. I mean, that's a, that's a significant difference. Oh, you yeah. Know? It, it yeah. communicates something different just from that one visual element. Now, speaking of lighting, I have like three different variations of this. There's there's the, I don't know what you call this technically. I'm not a DP. I'm a director. I'm not a DP. But but there's this is a white light. And then let's do here's a here's a yellowish light. That's right? warm. Yeah. Actually, that looks in the lighting in the room. That looks good. I think I'll that leave looks that good. One on. But but you see that you see the difference there. Yeah. And there here's a softer version of I think the first one I did. Or no. Now here's a cooler light. Yeah. Right. So if you're listening to this, what yeah. what Christopher's doing though is is actually showing the difference in the the color temperature of a light will mm -hmm. actually change the emotion and the look of yeah. the video. Yeah. It just, it just does. And um, when you and when you're in post production and and you hear terms like color correcting or color grading that's to help enhance the mood of that scene. Yeah. And it's also to make sure everything looks even from one shot to the next, to yeah. the next, to the next, because even if you have a baked in look on camera, when you get into editing, um, sometimes the shots don't match color wise. And so you have to do color correction, but then there's also color grading, which helps with the mood and the tone and stuff like that. So visual is very, very important. So oh, yeah. How you frame the shot? I mean, is the frame? Are you framing what you want to capture well? Yes. <laughs> are you getting good production value in that frame? Yeah. Is, is is your production value on you know within the boundaries of the frame? Yeah. Um, and then in in post, like, what do you want the final to look like? Do you yeah. want it to be warmer? Do you want it to be softer? Do you want it to to have a, a sci fi look? I mean, there's all kinds of filters and LUTs you can throw on in editing that give it a completely different look yeah. and feel so you mix that with your choices of music and stuff and i mean you could actually end up with something completely different than what you shot depending on what you do on the output of it um let's talk about the framing for a second because when you said that um a movie popped to mind um you know so i and christopher knows this because we, we've talked about this off mic is that you know i have a running list of best movies of all time and best TV shows of all time. And on that movie list is um, Unbreakable, M. Night Shyamalan, which up until a point, every one of his movies was great. And then he just, all of a sudden, he can't make a good movie. <laughs> well, a little bit off the deep end. <laughs> but um, but if you, if you, did you ever see Unbreakable? I did a long time ago. I think I actually saw it in the theater. Well, if you, if you watch Unbreakable and you think comic book. Yeah then you understand the framing and even the colors he does there. I mean, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Glass has mm -hmm. a certain color. Samuel his character, Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. And, but the framing is very much like the splash pages in a comic book and there's mm -hmm. not a lot of cuts and stuff like that. And I always thought, man, even, even some of like when the, when, when Mr. Glass is the kid and, and the shot is actually upside down and it kind of comes around and it's just, it's, it took it to me a whole nother level because comic books play kind of this underlying sub theme in a way, you know, about the superheroes and he ran a cot, he worked at a comic or he, he loved a comic book store and everything like that. So, but you're right. I mean, framing can mean so much um, in, in the way that, that you have somebody in a frame or you, you have part of an object um, now to me, it kind of goes to absurd sometimes. And I think this is the difference between, I, it may have changed some, but in, in television and movies, uh, I personally don't like anything dumbed down. You know, I'm, I'm okay if I can't quite figure it out. Some people would say, well, you, you're, you're doing great. Cause you don't figure out a lot of stuff, but <laughs> that aside, but yeah, you, I don't mind. Right out of this. We're talking. <laughs> Yeah, Same yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't mind that. But what you notice a lot on television, especially American television, is there's constant close ups and cutaways of like, you know, he's reaching for the phone. Well, we got to show that hand touching the phone because the person at home might not have noticed that he grabbed the phone that he just pulled up to his head 
as opposed to what purpose did it serve? And I think sometimes that is a little bit of the difference between a movie. Um, now, what's funny, I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but, you know, years ago, older movies, the, the ones that were shot in like Cinescope and the, the wide, wide, super angle, the only way that they would work on television was a process called pan and scan. Yeah. And so you would see John Wayne on one side of the screen talking to somebody that you yep. couldn't see in the theater. You could. And all of a sudden yep. there would just be this bizarre pan over to, you know, James yeah, it, would, it would slowly <laughs> glide over to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because and, because yeah. if you think about it, you know, movie theater, rectangular yep. TV box at home back then square. So yeah. obviously, yeah. there's like a third. Yeah. There's like literally a third of the frame you're not seeing as yeah. as what it was in the. In the yeah. theater, which is why a lot of movies on DVD now will have a letterbox version yes. or, or a widescreen yeah. version, because then you're seeing everything within the frame the way the filmmakers yeah. intended yeah. it to be. And the flip side is, if you're watching uh, an old show on your your you know widescreen TV, right, and there's square. black bars on the side, it's because that's, because that's the way it was processed it, yeah. there, there's not a 16 by nine version of it it's a four by three um yep. which is extremely annoying yeah there's but, there's not a 16 by nine version of the rockford files dang it yeah is it really not i i don't i don't oh, think wow. so why, why how could there be i don't know but but so here's a little trivia for you um years ago there was a show back in the uh, 50s no 60s maybe called the cisco kid heard of it didn't see it that they actually, it was on the cusp of color coming in more. Mm. So they shot it in color, but it was released in black and white because they just felt that color was coming. And mm. so when the color transitioned, they can immediately then go, oh, okay, well, now it's in color. Oh, yeah. fun. I thought that was I, just brilliant. I don't know, you know, that's that's the forward thinking. We, we, should, we should have a fun trivia segment for, for our uh, ever-forming video podcast. For our no prize. Remember that with Marvel and the comics? Hey, you want a no prize? <laughs> that was a Stan Lee thing. So no, I, I don't. Yeah, I but wasn't yeah. a big. I wasn't a big comic fan. So let me ask you then a question from from being a director. Like, let's just take church people. Do you do you count scenes? Put that down. Put that down. He's holding up that. <laughs> he said the name of the movie, so I showed him the DVD. But do you do you go into that movie thinking I want X number of scenes and so therefore I, how the visuals work out or I mean how to you know well the number of scenes is in the script okay I mean, meaning meaning you're shooting what's on the page unless you know you get an idea on set and people are amenable to it and and you know right. filmmaking is a is a major collaboration it's not just a one man show so. Well, yeah. Then, okay. Let me ask it a different way that actually I think is is you mean better. shots, right? Yeah, shots. But let me. Yeah. So when you when you wrote it, I, I think this it. actually is better when you I co wrote it. it. When Thor, you Thor, Wes Halula, and Bob Sands were the writers on Church People. Did you visualize it? I visualize it when I read it. Um, and how much of that transferred to the actual movie? Well, again, it's... A, you see it, what I'm it, asking, right? I mean, yeah, how you yeah. saw it in your head. Got it. I know there's storyboards and everything, but... Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, do you notice that I say that's a really good question on questions that I didn't have to pause and think about? That's, <laughs> that's a really good question. That's right. It's, it's mm. a filler. I mean, it is a good question, but it's a, it's also a filler. Like, I don't know what I'm going to say. So, so I, okay, so let me put it this way. When I am writing something... yeah. I think it's easier for me to visualize it because I conceived the idea. But typically, gonna, mm -hmm. I know the shots that I want when I'm actually on location. That's just that's kind of how I I mm -hmm. function. Now I can know that you know standardly you have a master shot and standardly you have medium close up and standardly you have close up. So you can do a shot list of the different kinds of shots you want to get as far as that. But when you go beyond the standard, those are called specials. And if you want a special shot, like, oh, I want a special that's, you know, overhead looking down, which, by the way, I love those shots when they're used properly. And I have to be reminded, like when I see the, oh, I got to remember to use that because yeah. for some reason, I, I just don't tend to think of, oh, we can go overhead with this anyway. 
but um, but but something or like you you want to get um, something in the foreground like a book, and then in the background get the character and you do a, a what's called a a rack focus where the focus is on the book and then it racks to the main character and then the foreground is, is blurry with the book. Um, that's called a rack focus. So um, that's a special where we're like you know you're mm -hmm. aiming on one thing and you know it's not it's not your traditional master close up medium extreme close up you know so it's easier for me on location because i see the space that we're filming in yeah that's when i know the specific shots and the framing and stuff like that is on location unless maybe when i'm writing something then obviously i have something pictured in my head I mean, like it's it's almost like you ever um you ever like imagine it's almost like imagining what a radio DJ looks like. Oh yeah, you know I've never been right. right exactly, Ever. they they usually look completely Ever. different than what you imagine. Or yeah. or you imagine you know you're talking to somebody yeah. <laughs> in a place that you've never been, like like yeah. you've never been in their house or anything, and you're talking to them on the phone or whatever. Yeah. And you just you start imagining like, oh, where are they? What's that look like? And then you get there, and it's like completely different, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of like that when it comes to the writing. It's really challenging for me personally, just the way that I'm wired, to visualize it the way it's going to yeah. end up. Yeah. Because I usually don't know that until I'm on set and I'm collaborating with the director of photography, yeah. the DP, cinematographer, um, to to set up the shot. You know, it's funny, and and this is, may not be a, a great example, but when when I write, um, and I haven't written like screenplays and everything like you have, but when I've written, you know, video scripts or whatever, I I, I just I don't storyboard. I can't draw my 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 stick men don't even look like stick men. They insult all the stick men that have ever come before them. I just can't draw, so I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, with. Kevin Colby can't even do stick men. No, I can't. It's it's man. Weird. That's yeah. That, they just look like disfigured. There something. should be like a group for that. Hi, I'm Kevin Colby. Yeah, Hi, I Kevin. Draw stick men. No, yeah. I, I can't draw stick men. But I I so I don't storyboard, but I visually see it. I mean, I see it. I see. Yeah. I see the color, the framing, and everything. And the more you do it, I think it 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 works. Now. I always though reserve the right to change it. Unless you know, now if I'm if I'm doing something for a client that's completely different, but if I'm doing my my own, how I visualize something may change later in the edit, even during the shoot, based on the conditions. You right. know exactly. Um, what if you got to change things up? Oh, what, yeah. what if you? Yeah. I mean, I've been on a shoot where you, you lose a location. Yeah. Now and then, you know, and then so I mean, you got to work around yeah. that kind of stuff. Now the funny thing is though. In doing YouTube videos and you do a thumbnail, mm -hmm. a lot of times, not all the times, a lot of times I'll have a visual for the thumbnail, mm. how I want to like hold an object and it will come out pretty close to what I visualize. But again, that's a static image and things like that. Um, talking about visuals, another story. Oh, so another one of my favorite movies, The Untouchables. And did you ever see The Untouchables? I did. It's been a while, but I did. So the train scene at the, at the train station, you know, where the, the baby buggy is going down the, the steps and, and, you know, and it's the big I'm shootout. Just, I'm remembering the bridge scene. That's okay. That's all I'm remembering. So there's this, this huge scene in the movie and, mm -hmm. and where, you know, the, the, the bad guy they're really after, the guy they need to get that's going to bring Al Capone down is about to leave town. And if he leaves town, and uh, so they go to the train station to get him, uh, um, uh, Elliot Ness and his crew. Well, Brian De Palma was the director. And according to story, he what he wanted to do was have the entire scene take place on this train. Mm -hmm. And I guess the bean counter said, uh, no, you, you can't afford it or you don't have the time to build it or whatever. And. The story goes, he, he said to the, to the script writer or assistant or somebody, um, he wrote down, um, we'll shoot it uh, uh, or like, we'll do it at train station, figure out later. Mm. And so that whole scene, now there have been people since then that said it's, it's really kind of borrowed loosely from an old movie called The Potemkin or something like that, mm -hmm. The Battleship Potemkin, that it's, it mimics that. But still, the fact that 
he completely changed his direction, his location, other than and it went from on a train to a train station. Mm -hmm. And I think is one of the most chilling, well-executed scenes. I mean, the, the, the bridge one is good too in the, in the whole movie. Um, but how he had to rethink that and, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, scenes matter, but sometimes they may change and oh, yeah. hurt or help a movie or a show yeah, or a it, video. And the other thing that, that, that may change is, is dialogue because sometimes you get on set and it just doesn't yeah. like, it just doesn't feel right for the actor or whatever it just does, or it doesn't make sense like it did when it was being written or yeah. when you read it in the script, what, yeah. what the writer wrote. And, and so changing the phraseology or, or changing the line altogether that happens uh, quite a bit on set as well. And another thing that can adapt that can that visuals can do is uh, the use of slow mo. Yes, you know, slow motion can be overdone. Yes, but it you know it can that can add to the emotion. Or and you may have seen this in movies and shows and not realize it, but a long dissolve, a long dissolve is what it does is it gives you the idea of a long passage of time. Yeah. You know, so the guy's riding off on his horse and there's a long dissolve until you see him riding into the town. Well, whether you even think about it, you know that that took a while to get there. Right. When in reality, it was probably shot two months apart. Right. Different right. actor riding the horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another thing that a lot of people don't realize with visuals in movies is a lot of times you're seeing a stunt double or a double. Yeah. Um, a double is simply a, a person who fills in for the lead or yeah. or the 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 actor in focus, yeah. but uh, but from a distance. So, like for example, when you see um, a car driving on on the freeway, and you just cut from a shot of the lead actors in the car talking to each other, you cut to that second shot. That's probably a second unit shot. That's yeah. not first unit with the principal. That's the second unit, and they're not in that car. <laughs> you know, but. Yeah. It just all, it all ties together um, cohesively. Yeah. Well, and if you're listening to this on podcasts, there's actually two actors portraying myself and Christopher. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Cause we're, we're, we're actually better looking. Yeah. People are like, what the heck? Really? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so there's visuals in, in, in a nutshell. I mean, there's so much more we could talk about when it comes yeah. to visuals um just the overall aesthetic it, it can change with lenses it can change with cameras etc 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 um the other thing i, I just want to say real quick when you mentioned slow-mo the other thing that that works really well sometimes with slow-mo is when the sound cuts out yeah like, uh, like there's a scene in road to perdition where the sound cuts out i mean i think there's still music but there's no audio from set or anything and they're firing guns and i think it was slow mo, but even if it wasn't slow mo, that's a really that's a really fun trick to do, to really emphasize something is when yeah. you cut out the sound, but you still see the visual. That another that great movie, really effectively. Another that was a great. fabulously directed movie. I, I I think I I rented that one or something. I'd heard about it or it was on one of those free weekends and thought, wow. But I'm, I'm I'm also a huge huge Tom Hanks fan. Um, just I some somebody said one day that he's kind of like the Jimmy Stewart of our generation, and I'm like, I've, yeah, I, I think I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good. And, and so let me throw this out there to you guys listening or watching this or consuming it on both, you know, because you're trapped somewhere. Um, if you have any questions or any topics you'd like us to dive into, especially yes. about filmmaking. Uh, movie making, Hollywood, television, TV production, video production, radio yeah. production. Yeah, radio. Let us know. We've each um, done it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, you know, and and part of the the plan is to have uh, some guests on here too. But we would love to to dive into to things that you guys would say. Well, let, tell us more about this or explore this or debate us. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, um, or yeah, or or yeah. debate us. Just yeah. just we just ask that you be nice. Be, yeah, just be really nice. Be civil. Yeah. Be civil. Yeah. If not, we'll just block you. Too so. much, too much crap in the world today. We don't yeah. be civil. We can have are, a healthy debate in 2022. It's possible. But if you if you check it out on Anchor, 
which you can go to our website and then you can leave a voice message, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And our website is funny blue pizza.com. Dot com. <laughs> um, you, you, you may have to tighten that up in editing a little yeah, bit. But... <laughs> he doesn't know. I, I'm not touching this at all. So anyway, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Or you can leave comments on the YouTube video, and and we'll we'll read those. And um, you know, and, and but again, we'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback, your reviews. If they're nice, if they're not, just please don't share them with anybody. <laughs> just being honest, throwing us out there. So, but this was fun. Yeah. So any any closing thoughts, Kevin Colby, as we wrap up this episode about visuals in media content? No, I you know, I think there's a lot of ways to do it right and wrong. But I think if you gave the same piece, let's say a bunch of footage to five different people, mm -hmm. they might come back with looking something totally different. And yep. I think that is that is the beauty with with a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, director's cuts are different usually than what was released, and sometimes they're better, sometimes they're not. But um, but you know, if you can attest to that. <laughs> well, hey, and if you're just getting started, again? Let's try. yeah. What? Oh yeah, church people. He just did. There, it there was a director's cut of this that you're not seeing on the DVD. Oh, so man. that'll be behind our paywall. <laughs> <laughs> behind our paywall. Well, all right. So you're gonna sign us out. Well, thank you all for uh, watching and or listening to Funny Hello. Pizza. Go to the website.com. And, and, and the website is funny. Hello. Pizza. Dot com. Dot com. He's got that nice dot com voice. Dot all right. Com. So so thank you for joining us. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, evening, um, wherever you are. And please uh, drop us a comment. Go to our website, funnyblepizza.com, and leave us a voicemail. That's that right. would be fun. And um, check out our affiliate links in the description below if you're watching this on, say, YouTube or the like. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.